Good morning. So, I'm going to Zwele, good to see you. I'm going to I'm going to So, okay, we'll just quickly give her a massive round of applause. She's a uh, ooh la There we go. Her name, her name is Renee. So, everyone say, hey, Nay. Hey, Nay. Hey, Nay, Nay, Nay. There we go. So, so yeah, firstly, from our side, we are excited to, to be here this morning. Lo, lo and behold, um, believe, believe it or not, myself and my precious wife, we actually used to date in high school. Come on, Leo, All right. Um, and now, now I'm, I'm about to give my age away. So if your maths is really, really good, you'll be able to kind of calculate uh, how old myself and her are, her are. I was 15. She was 14 at the time, and this was in 2007. So this is a very, very long time ago. So if your maths is very, very sharp, you can more or less tell how old we are. So please continue to pray for us. Okay, but nonetheless, I want, I'm sharing that with you guys this morning very, very specifically and very, very strategically because when myself and my precious wife were dating back then, both me and her, we didn't know Jesus. We knew of God, but we didn't know God for ourselves. What I mean by that is, if I had to ask you guys, I know that all of you guys are super intelligent, if I had to ask you who's currently the president of this country, we would all say, Sir Ramaphosa, okay? He's the president of this country. So we know of him, but we don't know him personally. What I mean by that is, we know of Mr. Ramaphosa, but I don't know whether he likes KFC or whether he likes Nando's. I don't know what size shoe he wears. You know, I don't know what size suit he wears. You understand? So we, I, I knew of God, but I didn't know God for myself personally. And I think all of us in this room can relate to that very statement. And the reason why I say that is... Because maybe perhaps, you know, you kind of grew up in a home where ukoko, uoledi, or itai, utaima, you know, maybe he knew God or, you know, they told you about God and so forth. But the game completely changes when you discover God for yourself. And believe it or not, that happened for me nine years ago and I ended up in a very, very dark place. Nine years ago, I ended up in the back of a police van I was busy hitchhiking, drunk, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock or so in the morning. And the reason why I ended up in the back of the van is because I myself, as an individual, I did not know who I was. So I want to start off by sharing with all of you that essentially knowing your identity is an absolute necessity for your prosperity moving forward. Yeah, I'm going to rephrase it. Knowing your, listen to the words now, knowing your true, everyone say true, true. royal, royal. Authentic. authentic, all right, knowing your true, royal, authentic identity is a necessity for your prosperity moving forward. Because in today's day and age, amongst us as young people, one of the biggest temptations that we have as young people is to be fake. I mean, we go on Instagram and we are not satisfied with the selfie. So we do what? We put the filter on the selfie, right? Or we change. We want to change the way we physically look as people, which is a massive, massive problem. So I want to start off by sharing with all of you today that you seated there in your chair, even if no one has ever told you this before, myself being your brother and friend, we are here to come and tell you, good, see, you are enough. You are enough. I mean, there's people in this very classroom over here. You've never heard your dad or maybe even your mom tell you to your face, Gutsi, they love you. And I'm here to tell you as your brother and as your friend, that God, he loves you deeply. And there's nothing that you can do to make him love you more. I mean, God doesn't love me more because I'm telling you guys about him. God loves me because of who I am. And he's never going to change his mind about me. So I want to share a bit of my story with you guys. And then hopefully there'll be enough time. And then we want to open up for you guys to ask whatever questions maybe you perhaps have in your lives. Okay. So I grew up personally in a very, very awesome family. Like, I mean, I had my mom. I had my dad. Great family. I never saw my mom beat my dad. Or I never saw my mom swear at my dad or anything like that. Or my dad beat my mom. I never saw anything like that. Maybe your situation back at home is a bit different. I don't know. 
Because one thing all of us must understand within this room is besides us having all ears and nose and kneecaps and skagala, you know, besides us having all of these body parts, those are some of the things we have in common. But something else that we have in common, every one of us in this room, is something called problems. I mean, all of us got problems. I got some problems, my wife got some problems, Mr. President got some problems, the multi-millionaire got problems, the guy living under the bridge got problems. Everybody got problems. In life, you're going to go through challenges. In life, you're going to go through pain, which is the third thing that we have in common, pain and challenges. We all have those things in common. All right. You're going to go through tough times at times. You're going to go through hardships at times. You're going to get your heart broken at times. That is a part of the game. Now, maybe for the guys over here, how many of the guys you guys enjoy watching or playing soccer? Ipola. Okay. So when you play soccer, soccer, and please forgive me, ladies, but, 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 but soccer is a contact sport. So what happens? People get what? They get tackled in soccer. And imagine, can you imagine if Neymar or Messi or Ronaldo gave up playing soccer the first time they got tackled? We would have never seen the talent of Neymar or Ronaldo or Messi. So in life, also what's going to happen, whether you play soccer, whether you don't play soccer, at some stage, you will get tackled. And then when you do get tackled, you need to decide, you need to make a decision, which is the fourth thing we have in common. Something else we all have in common is decisions to make. Every one of us in this room, we've got certain decisions that we need to make. I mean, we had the one person um, from a school the one time ask us this question. They said to us, well, bro, what happens if I don't believe in God? I said, bro, that's your choice. God's not going to force you to believe in him. He's a gentleman. He's not going to put you in a headlock and say, hey, well, no. hey you must believe. Uh -uh. <laughs> that's your choice. That's your choice. And all of us in this room, we've got decisions to make. I mean, I'm going to be speaking to you guys over here right now. My wife might say something at some point. All right. Then the bell is going to go. That loud. Then we're going to open up this door and you guys are going to leave and we're going to leave and so forth. But at the end of the day, you still have got certain decisions to make. Myself too. I've got certain decisions to make. My wife has got certain decisions that she has to make. Can I give you a little, uh, a cool, interesting fact? A young adult, all right, makes about 25 to 35,000 decisions in a day. I'm going to share it again. Did you guys hear? That's a big number. A young adult makes about 25 to 35 decisions on a daily basis. Say again. 35,000 decisions. That's 35 triple zero. Those are a lot of decisions. I mean, right now, for example, you've decided to put your hands like this. And now you decided to laugh. And now you're nodding your head. So that's three decisions in one second. So on a daily basis, we make so many different decisions. And some of those decisions are absolutely life altering. I mean, some of you in this very room, you are one decision away from seeing your entire life change. One decision away. You think my toli mali, my amange moto, my toli dadla i fresh, you zobam nad. I ko leon tolen. You need to make a decision as to what you are going to believe for your life. And that's the thing, right? I can stand here and talk to you until my face turned blue, pink, red, yellow, cappuccino, mochaccino, whatever color my face is right now. But at the end of the day, bruh, you got to make the decisions for yourself moving forward. And the best way to make the best decisions is to make those decisions with God. Best way.